Hi friends, thank you so much for tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a new top five, bottom five. I noticed a lot of requests for this kind of video on a recent one that I did, and it's very self-explanatory, the idea. I pick a brand, um, try to pick a brand that I've tried like nearly everything from, so I've really got a good scope of products to pull from. And I just name my top five favorite products and my least favorite products. Give it a thumbs up for sure if you'd like to see more, and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I'll list all the brands that I've featured below already um, and maybe check out that list and definitely let me know if you have any requests for other videos like this. And also with these videos, if you don't see something mentioned, I mean, odds are there are a lot of things like with this particular video, there are a lot of products that I really like that are kind of slightly outside the top five, but the thing about doing the top five is really to hone in on the best of the best, you know? And so for me, in my personal opinion, there may have been some things that I still liked but weren't the tip top and same goes for the things that I liked the Least. There's certainly that kind of average ho-hum range in every brand where there are some products that just didn't wow you but weren't the worst things either. So jumping right into my top five, I'm going to work up to my ultimate number one from the brand. So top five, first thing I'll mention are these new um, matte color riche lip pencils. They are so good, so creamy, so full color. Um, there's one shade in particular called um, Mastermind. I know the names are kind of cheesy, but don't hold it against the product. It's a really good lip pencil. I've got a lot of this shade on my lips today actually um, as well as the infallible matte paint in peach pit. But these lip liners, they go on so velvety smooth. You know they are a skinny pencil, a very traditional sharpenable lip liner, but they go on so easily. Like I can fill in my entire lips with one of these just in a jiffy. They don't pull, they're super creamy, but they are matte and they have some really nice bright shades in the range too. There's some like fuchsia and red colors. There's another neutral that's like a super cool like kind of rosy taupe and it's called Matt's It. That's a pretty one as well. This one, um, the one that I've worked into my look today, a little bit warmer. I guess I described it as a deep nude kind of spice color. This one called 112 Mastermind. Just a nice one to have in your collection. Great if you ever, you know, grab a nude lipstick and it's like a little too nude, a little too light. You can use this and almost contour your lips a little bit and give them a little extra dimension. So I think that's a great line of lip liners. Number four would be the Pocket Palettes from L'Oreal. This is a great little line of eyeshadow, actually. They're super consistent, really smooth and creamy. I'm actually wearing this one called Boudoir Charm today. I'll open this up for you. It's very fall, you know? On my lid, in my crease, and even just really buffed out, like just above the crease, is this kind of burgundy shade there. That's a total winner. I've got a little bit of this shade on the lid, and the other two shades are like kind of smudged on my lower lash line, but I love that one. My other favorite from the line is called French Biscuit. Look at this. Like you've got some mattes in there to play with. This pretty like creamy peach shade, couple of tones of brown, one is more matte, one has a little sheen, and then this shade with the sparkle. If you need a great, basic, gorgeous drugstore eyeshadow quad, check that out. They've got more colorful ones as well with like blues, aquas, purples. I will definitely be linking below to any related videos that I've done, by the way, to some of these products, but I have done a full review on those quads and I think they're just the bomb, really great stuff. Number three. This is a long, long time favorite for me from L'Oreal and it's the True Match Pressed Powder. I have loved this stuff I'm thinking back to like the earlier days of my channel, but to this day, it remains, I think, one of the strongest products in L'Oreal's line and definitely their best powder. These come in a lot of shades. The one that I'm wearing and holding here is Buff Beige. I've also worn Sun Beige as well, if I'm a little bit darker. I think I wore that a lot actually in my news days. The texture of this powder is just everything. I mean, you feel how creamy this stuff is. It's matte, but it doesn't look like an awful matte, you know, heavy mask on your skin. But this powder packs in a little coverage. If there was any powder, like I guess not marketed as powder foundation, but works nearly as well as most powder foundations do and has as much coverage as that type of product, it would be this thing right here. It's the kind of thing where, yes, it can work for touch-ups, but it can go beyond that. You know, if you want to apply a little 
little concealer all over your skin and then kind of buff something like this on for a little added coverage, it would certainly give you that. So I think that's a great line of powders to look into. Okay, number two, I am so cheating with this one, guys, and I know it, I'll admit it, but the whole paints collection. Okay, this is great. I love that L'Oreal has done this. They've created this line of really interesting products from lips to cheeks to eyes that have a little more color, a little more vibrancy. It kind of makes me think of a rebirth of that L'Oreal hip line. I have been so impressed with certain things that they've done though in this line. I've done a whole video review like swatching things out, trying them on. I tried on like all the lip products. They've got just a standard like L'Oreal paints lip color. It's the line that has spicy blush. So I've tried on all of those, but since that video, they've come out with um, the matte version, also metallics, like the matte peach pit that I'm wearing today. The metallic and Moonlust is a great one. Love, love, love the paints eye colors. These are creamy eye colors that set to a really long wearing place. Um, you'll find mattes within the line. There are some that are shimmers. Time out, short story. My battery very rudely went dead. Also, there was a baby in need of my services downstairs. So I'm back now and someone's mowing next door. So if that comes through, I'm not sure if it'll come through or not, but if you hear it, that's what it is. That's just, you know, everyday life. But I think what I was talking about were these infallible paints, quite a range of colors actually. And I really like the Sunset Fire one if you're into warm looks. Cool Ivory is kind of like two different tones of this shimmery pearl. And that can be a really pretty accent to almost any look also. And then Navy Yard is this gorgeous navy blue and a rosy sort of peach color paired with that. But definitely check out my full review on the entire paints line to see so much more. But in the smallest nutshell possible, I think these eye colors are great. I think their blush palette is outstanding. I'm wearing a couple of these shades mixed today. This is a powder blush palette. At first I thought this was cream, but it's really like just an intense array of powders. A couple of peachy tones, a couple of pinky tones. They are all matte and they are intense and they're really beautiful. They're intense, but they're wearable. And so I love that. I've really reached for that a lot. And then the other aspect of their line, like I said, the lip colors, the regular ones, they've got great matte ones, also the metallics. I mean, it's just a fantastic formula. And by the way, these are not like squeezing up through the tube. They're actually a doe foot applicator within a squeezy type tube. So I think that's a really nice packaging design as well. Paints collection, definite win for me. Um, I think they have really put L'Oreal, I guess, back on my radar quite a bit more due to a lot of these products. It's kind of caused L'Oreal to be a brand to watch for me. I mean, they're a big brand and you might think, well, who's not watching them? But honestly, you know, for a while there, I think I had kind of a L'Oreal dry spell and now there are quite a few things that I like from this brand. Um, but my number one would be the Lash Paradise. Yes, you probably knew this was coming since I hadn't mentioned it yet. And I, I just absolutely freaking love this mascara. If you watched my drugstore haul, like restock video, uh, repurchasing things that I'd run out of, I recently repurchased the Mystic Black shade of this, which I'm about ready to bust into. Probably the next time I do my makeup, I will get that one out because this one's pretty dry now. But it's a brush that reminds me a lot of Too Faced Better Than Sex. However, in a couple of aspects, I think it's better than that mascara in that it really does not smudge or flake off on me at all, and it does a better job of holding the curl of my lashes. It's the kind of mascara, like, sometimes I feel like I talk about mascaras and it's such an individual thing, right? So I would say something like, you know, I really enjoy this mascara, but if you've already got something you love, you know, go with that, stay with it, enjoy. Um, but this is one of those mascaras where I might challenge you and say, like, if you have not tried this, I think you should try putting this up against whatever your current, like, Holy Grail mascara might be right now. And just see, just see if you don't like this better because I bet you will. So again, that's my top five. If I had just a couple of honorable mention products, a couple of things that I really like that may not be for everyone, um, but just stuff I wanna give a little shout out to. The Pro Glow Concealer, I wear this in the classic ivory shade. And if you're into a lighter coverage makeup look, like you're wearing a lot of tinted moisturizers, light coverage foundations, this concealer is so great with those because it does doesn't like over mattify and overpower the coverage of whatever your face makeup is. So it just wears really well alongside lighter looks. So if you're into that, you might like this. And another thing that they've made recently foundation wise that I think is pretty darn good is this infallible total cover. I didn't jump into loving this one immediately, but I realized it takes quite a bit of TLC to like, you know, blend this into the skin. Like it needs to be worked into your skin, like with a beauty blender, preferably. Um, I'll have to link to the get ready with me where I put this on and I really enjoy 
enjoyed the finished look. I got so many compliments on my skin actually in an Instagram picture where I had this on. Got it in the shade Natural Buff. I mean, it's just, it's not foolproof, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so that's kind of putting it outside my top five for this brand. I don't think everybody maybe wants or needs this much coverage. And you kind of got to really work with it as you put it on. It's like opposite end of the application spectrum from that Estee Lauder water blend stuff, which frankly, like if Tyler wanted to come up here and put that on me, he could probably blend that stuff out. It's so easy to work with and blend. This takes a little more working with, but it's probably one of the better coverage drugstore foundations. Let's move on now to the bottom five. So I'm going to work up to an ultimate worst here. Um, but number five in terms of things I don't really like from this brand, the Infallible Pro Glow Powder. I saw this come out and I think part of me kind of hoped that it might be a formula just like True Match, but somehow like a teeny bit more luminous maybe, but it's really not. I feel like the powder texture is drier, like not quite as good. And it's got this weird split pan thing going on here where it's basically matte powder on the bottom. And then the top part has little flecks of sparkle and it's not enough. Like th there's not enough of a sheen to the top part of the powder to actually have a glow effect on the skin. I guess if you wanted to take a powder and make it more glowy, maybe you could go into True Match, like dab into this and then dab into your highlight and kind of buff the two together. I don't know. I may have also been hoping this would be kind of like the It Cosmetics Illumination powder, you know, like a good coverage powder paired with just a little bit of luminosity, but this just, it's not doing enough for me in really any regard. Number four on my list of bottom five would be the Color Riche Eyeshadow Singles. Um, these I thought were very, very hit and miss. When I redid like this makeup room and I redid my storage, I got rid of a lot of single eyeshadows and I got rid of like three or four out of this line that I just didn't think were good enough. One of the better ones of the bunch is this number 207 that I held on to. But the other ones I felt like to put your finger in them, it's like, okay, this is a nice feeling texture, but then they wouldn't deliver really. Like something with the formula, I had difficulty picking it up on my finger, but also picking it up with a brush. So I feel like these quads are so consistent and a better formula overall than these. Now, I'm not saying there might not be a few gems in this range. It's just, it's hit and miss. Number three on the stuff I don't really like list is this uh, Infallible Total Cover Corrector Palette. This just does not contain the shades that actually function to correct my skin. You know, um, there are two shades in here that I think are really rich and colorful. And if you're into greens, if you're into purples, like these show up very boldly in that way. I don't typically reach for those kinds of shades. I'm more of maybe a yellow or a peach type corrector person. This is not very peachy at all. Like it really does not function to correct darkness on the under eye. This yellow can be kind of brightening, but that's all it is. You know, these aren't very good coverage products. I do also have the skin tone um, palette and those I think are a little bit better. I can get a better concealed effect from those, but even still with that, the coverage is a little lacking. They're just a little too thin. They leave me wanting more, needing more concealer wise. And again, with this range, like nothing is effectively tackling my biggest problem area, which would be the under eye. Like I'm wearing these even today and I had to go over and over it with other stuff to just kind of build it up. This to me is one of those products that you feel like you're building up, building up and still not seeing enough effect out of it, no matter how much you build it. Number two in the bottom five would be this L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. I know some people love the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara. If you do, I'm thinking chances are you're a person who does not have issues with losing the curl in your lashes. Like if you've got naturally curly lashes, maybe you love Voluminous and maybe you love this primer, but if you're a straight lash girl like me, this primer I feel like practically is like lash straightener on me. I don't know how to explain it, but I put it on. I've got my nicely curled lashes. I put on this primer and they just drop. This is just not a formula that plays well with my lashes and I don't see some pronounced like, oh my gosh, now they're getting huge that I put, you know, a mascara on top of this. It's not doing a lot for me from the primer, like building up the lashes standpoint. And it surprised me a little bit because L'Oreal Double Extend, going way back to college days, um, the mascara that has the white side and then the dark side and it's just regular double extend, not the red tube, but the like golden white tube. I love that stuff. That works so well for me for so many years. But I feel like the base coat of that one was maybe a little thicker, slightly drier than this, and maybe that's why it built up better on my lashes. But this just kind of sucks the curl from them and doesn't do too much. And as it stands right now, my least favorite product from L'Oreal is the Brow Stylist Kabuki Blender. This product, um, 
it, it's way overboard for my brows and I see it being pretty overboard probably for a lot of people. We're really looking at a crayon style thing here and right now like yeah the tip is pretty well formed there and you look at this kind of going into my brows and you think yeah it's not too big but when that rounds off you're going to be in a real pickle. If I already feel like this is way too thick for my brows this is not a sharpenable thing here that we're dealing with. But then this little brush that's on the end it is literally like the tiniest kabuki brush you've ever seen or like a really dense um, high crease brush. There's not a lot of movement to it. It's just really thick. It is soft and it seems like a decent cut to it but you're supposed to like put this on and then you can brush it in through. But all I get with this product is like overboard brows. It's just way way too much and I've used some thicker products in my brows at times like thicker pencils. You know things that weren't just that little pinpoint brow product like a brow whiz or something like that. But this it's like how were you ever supposed to get any precision out of this because as you use it it's just going to round off more and more and then this brush like what? Like does that really it, it doesn't carry product through and kind of separate the product through the brow hairs like just a regular spoolie brush would. So somebody was trying to really recreate the brow idea with this product but it does not work for me. So I think that about covers it. That's my top five bottom five for L'Oreal. Thank you so much for requesting this video and definitely let me know again what kinds of brands you want to see featured this way. I think it's a fun way to pack a lot of info into one video so I'm so glad you enjoy them and I will see you guys soon. Bye!